Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Ratner. Today I am joined by Katie, who has been suffering from back and neck pain for over 15 years. We're going to talk about how the columns can help her get new information and full hope for a complete recovery. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below and we'll get back to you personally. Katie, thank you so much for joining me here. I'm always blown away by the generosity that people bring in being willing to share this session live happening right now, uh, right in front of the audience. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. It's great to meet you. You too. So um, what I thought we would do is to get you oriented to what this process will be like. I'm just going to tell you kind of the overall goal. The overall goal is to get you much more of an understanding of what has happened in your mind-body process, how my way of thinking about it can shed some new light on it, because I understand you've, you've actually engaged in lots of TMS stuff before, which we'll talk about, and get you some hope as to why it would get better, why this is going to be different. So we're going to talk about kind of how to orient to the system, and then I'll take you right through it. How does that sound? That sounds fantastic. I'm excited. Okay. So one place to start here, Katie, is you you have a lot of experience with TMS, as Sarno called attention myositis syndrome or mind-body issues, as it's sometimes referred to elsewhere. Can you tell us first, though, what's the main symptoms you've been having? Um, it's neck and back pain. It started 15 years ago. It came out of nowhere. And uh, it just was only in my neck. And now it's just now it's sort of in my neck and my entire back and it's pain that's always there i guess it gets worse sometimes it gets a little better but it's never been gone and there was no accident or anything that caused it it just appeared right okay and how long in that process was it before you discovered sarno or any other mind body uh, i want to say that i discovered sarno maybe halfway through the process, probably seven years ago or so. Okay, and, so that, um, that puts you at the eight-year mark, which is the same amount of suffering I had. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you've had the same amount of suffering on top of seven years before that. Yeah. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit about what you've experienced and um, just to frame what it is that we're going to do here. My understanding is you understand the, the TMS or mind-body concept quite well. You mostly have accepted that that is what's happening. I know you, you said some doubt has started to come up as you've worked it in and nothing has gotten better. But it does seem like you are someone who has accepted that likely this is what's going on. You're pretty sure about that. And yet... It's not coming down, and the symptoms are pretty constant. I, I hear there are some minor ups and downs, but do you ever have hours or even minutes where you don't have pain? No, I don't even remember what it feels like to be not in pain. Wow. Oh, my God. Uh, I, listen, I, I've certainly been there myself, but every time I hear it from somebody, I, I reimagine it. And the fact that you haven't had this, especially because I've been out of this for now over 11 years. So, and you're going to get out of it, too. We just have to work oh. at the right way of thinking about it. I know we can do this because I know some of the things that have stood in your way. And that's some of what we'll talk about today is why didn't these other things work? So let me introduce my system a little bit. You're familiar with my system from the podcast or how did you hear about me? I heard about you because you were interviewed on Eddie Lindenstein's podcast mm -hmm. and then I started listening to your podcast <clears throat> so that's how I'm familiar so I am familiar with your system okay so you understand the basic uh, idea of the columns I do okay I'm going to take you through some of it if I say something you already know certainly let me know I'll, sk I'll skip over that but in this consultation we're going to go through the three columns so there's the emotions column the doubt column and the power column mm -hmm. and I'm going to describe what each of them are and today we're mostly going to focus on the emotions column. Next, next time we meet, we will focus on the doubt column. The third time we meet, we'll focus on the power column. And then we're going to get to action steps. What do we do with this? So, I love this. <laughs> good. All right. So the emotions column is the column where we look at the acute onset and uptick in symptoms. 
And it is driven, as, as kind of Sarno talked about, that it is driven by the fact that when we don't want to know something emotionally, we can have a physical symptom to come in and distract us from that and keep, keep that at bay. Now, is the emotions column going to apply to you much in a 15-year symptom that doesn't move that much? Not on that level. That's actually going to be more doubt column because the doubt column is about the supposedly chronic conditions, the things mm -hmm. that just don't move at all. And what that means to me is one of the one thing I already know about you just from the way the symptoms are presenting is that you are having some kind of doubt that we need to get to that's holding you back because that's the thing that cements things in place so much. The emotions right. column is going to become much more useful to you once we move that doubt around enough and you start to have hope that you can get better. Then you're going to see the, the changes and that's going to be those onsets and upticks and even downshifts that all relate to emotional life. But we want to get you prepped for that and we're going to do that today. I'll get into that in a second. The power okay. column though, which we'll get to in our third session, is about your relationship with yourself and how that could hold you back from getting better. So we're going to remove all of the obstacles. Each column poses certain obstacles and if we understand it, we can remove that obstacle and move forward. So that sounds great. Yeah, I wanted to ask you though, because you have a lot of experience with TMS and, and going to different practitioners, reading different books. Does this sound different to you yet? It does. Uh, it sounds more um, results oriented and more like there's going to be concrete action steps and it's going to be more clear the things I need to do and why yep. I'm doing them. Mm -hmm. Right. Because otherwise you can be really lost. You know, you'll try things out, but it's very haphazard. And I think that um, I would say that the mind body community does certain things very well. And included in that are things like bringing this to your attention, making it clear why it works the way it works in a kind of more general way and backing it up with research, things like that. But where I think people are often falling through the cracks is what happens when you have questions that are deeper about this? Where, where do you go with those? And I'm, I'm kind of that guy, the, the questions guy, um, yep. because I needed that. So we're going to start getting questions answered today. Each column is yes. going to answer certain questions. The emotions column is going to answer questions um, really about what may have begun this in the very first place. Because that's not what's happening to you now. Now you're in a thought process. of It's a 15-year thought process. Uh, I have that right, right? 15 years? Yep. 15-year thought process where doubt would build and build and build, or even if you brought it down some, would pop back up or you know, lingers just because it's still there. So we're going to get to that next session. In this session, what I want to do is to find out about your emotional life so we can map out how we're going to use the emotions column once doubt is cleared out. Does that make sense okay. so far? Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So I know you brought something to take notes with. What we're going to do is the task of the emotions column. And the task of the emotions column is to build out about 6 to 12 different themes that represent you. What I want this to look like is I want you to be able to look at this list and be like, yeah, that's me. We didn't leave anything major out. So we have to touch on all of the major pieces of your life, and I'm going to help you organize that. Some of them we're going to get to specifically today, and some we'll get to kind of more generally, and then I'll help you build it out as we go. But okay. do you understand the kind of the basic idea of what an emotional theme is in the emotions column? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'm going to say I'm going to say so anyway because for the viewers anyway they they need to know. But the an emotional theme is something that co covers a very broad area of your life but also gets specific in how we talk about it. So, as an example, if you ever felt unsafe in your life, that's a pretty broad topic. And if we didn't touch on it, we would not be describing your life. It ha I know some background on you, so I think you have felt unsafe at various times. Does that sound right to you? Absolutely. Okay. So that's one example. Another is maybe um, 
self-esteem struggles. Did you feel good about yourself or not? Because all of these things are things that can get activated in your present day life. And we need to know about them so that we can interpret the moments as they come up. So yeah. most people have a self-esteem thing of some kind. Um, there can be broad things like uh, when people either didn't believe you about suffering or abused you in some way. Uh, where you felt swept aside, validation uh, or feeling valid is another one. So what we're going to do is first, we're just going to get a, a list together of the main themes and I'm going to help you draw it out. But I want okay. you to start if you can. If you can't, it's okay. Do you have an idea of what just one of those themes would be? And I'm going to help you understand how to craft it. This is just to get it organized. And that's part of what this system does is organize our thinking on this. So mm -hmm. what's one theme that really covers a major part of your life? One theme that you haven't mentioned would be not feeling good enough. Okay. So I'm going to take some notes here and I want you to take, um, take notes as well. But I just wrote down not feeling good enough. Yeah. That to me is, is, it's like the beginning of a theme. It's not quite where I want it to be because there's probably something to expand on it, but it's a general concept that if you were walking around in your everyday life and you had an interaction that made you feel extra not good enough, a symptom could go up. Now, I know this one doesn't, the symptoms going up doesn't necessarily apply to you enough yet because doubt column work is where we're going to do a huge amount of the work. But first, mm -hmm. we got to get this part set. So not feeling good enough. That's one. Other ideas about it. What are the themes? What other themes beyond not feeling good enough? Um, not feeling seen or like people don't pay attention to me or I'm invisible. Mm, okay. Not feeling seen, invisible, people not paying attention. Okay. This is great work, Katie. I just wanted to say um, for some people they're not going to be able to articulate it quite as well as you already are doing. You've had some therapy experience. You've, you've worked on mind body stuff. So maybe that's part of why you're able to think about this so well. Mm -hmm. But I do want to say, this is the kind of thinking we want. We've got two themes now. Let's keep going. We're just, and, and uh, we're going to get it to a point where eventually you're like, no, that, that covers it. I think we got it. It'll click into place. Okay. So what else, what are we missing? And I'm adding these on top of the three that you mentioned in the beginning, which okay, were so all let's valid, circle back to those. applicable. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's circle back to those. So um, not feeling safe was one of them. Was there a different like, way you'd phrase that? I would say there's no one to protect me oh, or to have wow. my back. That's why I didn't feel safe. I had to protect myself, but I needed help. This is good. Uh, not good that it happened, of course, but very, very <laughs> good information. So there's no one to protect me or help me or have my back. Yes. Interesting phrasing, too. Back. Oh, back my issues. gosh. Uh, and I had to protect myself. Yeah. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you think I had to protect myself is its own theme? Because sure. I think it is because having no one to protect you is one thing to be upset about. But having to protect yourself and maybe feeling overwhelmed? I don't, what, how did you feel about it? Having to protect myself felt like I had to be incredibly strong, independent, and mature from a young age. To like too young for me to have to deal with things like that. Okay, hold on. I'm just making notes on that. Would you say it was overwhelming or... I don't know. It feels like a, um, not strong enough of a word. I, I often look for the stronger word. How would you describe it? Let me think. Having to be too independent, too strong, growing up too fast. Um, it felt overwhelming in an unfair way. It was like something was being put upon me that shouldn't have been allowed to. Like it wasn't fair. Okay. Now, Katie, I want you to know, when I'm taking these notes, I'm going to send these to you afterwards. So okay. you take down what you take down. I'll send you what I have, and we'll kind of combine notes. But we're making progress. We already have four themes. 
Okay. They're not fully developed necessarily, but we're going to go through and do that. Let's keep going. Um, wh what else from what I said before? I, I mentioned self-esteem. Is that, how would you put that into words as best you can? Yes, I would like, that is a huge theme. That's one of the top themes, self-esteem struggles. So I'm glad that you brought that one up. Yeah. And that is one that I feel like still does affect me to this day um, with my job. I'm, a, I'm an artist. I'm a, like, I'm self-employed and I have to put myself out there and put my work out there a lot, which is a very vulnerable feeling that um, leads to like me being open to criticism and things like that. So with having low self-esteem it's that's very hard makes me feel nervous makes me feel like i have to put on an act and <laughs> and appear to be really confident when inside i feel really low about myself okay um so it's interesting this to me feels like another form of lack of safety but it's its own theme oh sure because you feel very vulnerable to the environment because you don't feel good about you enough yet. Now, when we get to the power column, that's where we're going to start to address some of those feelings or at least give you a roadmap of how to address them. But I'm just mm -hmm. noting this is another way you didn't feel safe. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to ask you about the one other thing that I mentioned as an example, which was validity. Do you feel valid as a person? No, I feel like as an artist, I've been doing imposter syndrome for 20 mm. years that I've been an artist, even though I've gone to graduate school, I have tons of experience. I have tons of training and expertise. So I feel invalid in my career. I also feel invalid in my pain journey. Close family didn't even validate or even believe my pain they didn't have a lot of sympathy empathy for me um getting that in combination with doctors also making you question or want you to um prove your pain that makes you feel horribly invalid okay uh you are giving so much good information and this is to, sometimes I have to pull these things out of people more because they don't have it as well articulated. I think you're going to have a very easy time with the emotions column um, because you already kind of know yourself in these ways. I'm just going to help you get it a little more organized, polished, honed, and then show you how it applies. But that the application will come more a little bit later on. What I'm noting here, though, is you said things that I split into two different themes. One is the imposter syndrome as an artist, that you don't feel valid in your career. Mm -hmm. And then another is that you don't feel valid as a pain sufferer, that you didn't get the empathy uh, from people in your life, that doctors made you question it, and you needed to prove your pain, essentially. Now, yes. there's a third element of validity that I want to ask about, though. Separate from your career... And separate from you as a pain sufferer, do you feel valid? Do I feel valid just as a as a person? Yeah. This is going to be so, so horrible to say, but I don't feel like I have a whole lot of worth. I don't feel like I'm worth much. Sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a waste of resources or something like that so mm -hmm. i would say that yes uh oh that makes me so emotional <laughs> right that I, yeah i do feel invalid as a person i'm sorry katie that that's an <laughs> awful feeling but i want to show you something did you see how when i asked the question it's almost like this was the one that was hiding yeah. this you were thinking that you weren't feeling valid in your career and as a pain sufferer, and those are true. But I think where it really hurts is you don't feel valid ever. Right. On the whole. 
And that hurts my heart even to think about. Because you've lived your whole life like this. Yeah. And I, I don't want that for you. The good news is your symptoms are actually going to get you out of this. Your symptoms combined with me <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you, right? Because we're going to take your symptoms and understand them. But what you just said is incredibly key. I'm going to tell you why specifically for you. You are deeply upset that you don't feel valid as a person. Every, anybody would. And what does it do to someone when they're trying to not have doubt? Well, how are you supposed to not have doubt if you don't feel that you're valid as a person? Right. You can't even trust what you would think because you don't trust that you're worth anything. Right. So now we're seeing how the columns relate to each other. And we're seeing how the emotions column can help to bring down doubt when you understand what has happened to you. Right. Which, which is a great start. The other thing that we're going to find is when you bring down doubt, the feelings about yourself and, and validity are going to start to come up. It's going to take a little bit of time here as we work with it, but I think this was a very big uh, moment, certainly in our work. But I wanted to ask you, is that something that we just got to now? Is that something that you've ever really voiced before or felt in full? I've, I've voiced, I've probably journaled about that i've thought it i don't know if i've ever said that to anyone i mean so yeah well that's pretty big then <laughs> i think and does it strike you that way yeah absolutely okay i think this is big and by the way i'm honored by that you know oh, uh, thank you well it, it's an honor to have somebody share that with me particularly something that they've never shared with. You've kept that inside your, your whole life and maybe even a little bit hidden from yourself because look what happened here. We started looking at validity and you said it's about the career. It's about being a patient. And I said, wait, what about in the middle where you are, just you? Right. And that hurt a lot worse emotionally. It's shameful to think that about yourself. You don't want to go around thinking that so i probably pushed it away in the back <laughs> okay one thing i do want to say we're going to come to this especially when we get to the power column there's a reason you haven't felt valid as a person and it has nothing to do with whether you're valid or not you are valid i need to help you see that but i but part of doing that is to help you see why did you come to that right which that's going to be more in the power column in that third session Okay, okay, so sit tight with this information. We're just getting it organized. Sounds good. How is this so far? Does it feel like it's getting you some information, organizing things? Yep, it's right on. Okay, good. So we covered the three that I brought up. You brought up, um, I would say, you know, not feeling good enough is a version of what we just did. Yes. So I'm actually going to move that into one overall theme. Um, but not feeling seen and being invisible, that's its own thing. There being no one to protect you, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. Having to protect yourself and growing up fast in that unfair way, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. Self-esteem in relation to your art and work, that's another thing. Um, it's interesting. Imposter syndrome as an artist, I think, fits with that, but it may not. Here's my question to you. One of the themes is about being vulnerable to the criticism of others. And then the other is about feeling like an imposter. They feel like two separate but related things. Mm -hmm. Or do they feel like one to you? You're the one who will actually know. I think that they're two separate but related things. Yeah, I do too. Okay. And then we've got um, invalid in your, your pain journey. So now we have, so far, seven different themes. I want to keep Can going. I add one? On to the self-esteem struggles. Mm -hmm. I've said that I felt low self-esteem in my art, but I also, my low self-esteem start, started when I was very young about my body, about my weight. And that is the heaviest root of my low self-esteem is about how I look. Okay. Um, it's interesting. You even said the word heaviest. I don't know if you caught that, but... <laughs> The heaviest no. one is about your weight. So yeah. 
low self-esteem about body and weight. Um, and I do want to say, uh, this is not atypical for women. It, it's very hard in society. There's a lot of judgment around it. This is something I'm going to want to explore with you. How did it impact you? When we go back through these themes a little bit, we're going to get specific. And we're going to get to how. But while we're here, let's do that on this one. So how did it affect you? And what did it mean to you? Well, um, it affected me be a lot because I started ballet when I was six years old. And I took it very seriously. And I danced five times a week classes and a company up until I was in my early 20s. So I think like 17 years of ballet, dancing in point shoes, teaching classes. I was so serious about it that I would have made it my career. But I was like a little bit chubby as a little kid. Mm -hmm. So um, I got shamed a lot for that um, by higher ups at my dance studio because that's just the part of the culture of ballet. So even though I worked hard and I was technically really good and I was really accepted for my skills, um, my body was not accepted. And that ended up ultimately being the reason that I did not pursue it professionally as my career, which it was what I wanted to do but I was told, Katie, you'll have a really, really hard time. You will have to do extreme things to keep your weight way, way down. Like, I don't advise this for you. Even though I'd been studying it my whole life wow. to like an, an athlete level. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there may be two themes in this. I want to ask you about it. One is, um, did you feel like you were pushed away from doing what you really wanted to do, that there was a loss. Yes, big loss. And that feels like its own theme. Um, so I'm going to say there was a big loss in not being able to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. We might explore that more. But what I have with the weight one is this. Um, low self-esteem about my body and weight. Um has affected me my whole life. And these are my words, Katie. So I want you mm -hmm. to move them around and change them. My words don't matter, although they can sometimes unlock something. Okay. So I think I, I had it phrased as something like this. I wasn't taken seriously and got shamed for my body. Um, so in other words, I wasn't taken seriously and got shamed because of how I look slash am. And my skills were ignored and I was rejected for who I was. Um, I want to know if that's accurate. It may not be. Instead of I wasn't taken seriously, I would say I wasn't accepted. Okay, good. See, this is what we need to do. The wording always has to be fits with you. I'm not the one who knows. Yeah, so, it was more serious than not being taken seriously. It was that I wasn't accepted. Okay, so I'm going to read So that's it this way the now. only part of that sentence that I would change. Okay, I want to say, though, this is part of how the columns work and how my, my structure works. I listen to you because you're the one who actually knows. And sometimes people have trouble articulating it and then they need my help. But if someone like you, you know, if I say something that's not quite what you want, that's not right. Mm -hmm. So now let me read it back to you. I wasn't accepted and got shamed because of how I look slash am. My skills were ignored and I was rejected for who I was innately. Yes, that's good. Okay. It should feel like that. Like, did you feel like that clicked? That was like, yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what an emotional theme should feel like. Okay. Let's talk about the, the loss of it. What was, the, what did the loss, how did that take shape? What did it mean? Well, it's funny. I didn't even acknowledge the loss. I sh put it on the back shelf and I ignored it. And I just moved on with my life. What am I going to do instead? What do I do next? And I suppressed that 
and never mourned that or acknowledged it for many, many, many years until one year I was at a family gathering and my aunt, who is like um, a sensitive and very intuitive person was asking me about it. And she mentions that exact thing. Wow, Katie, that's really a loss to be mourned. 17 mm. years of dancing and you did it so much. You put so much energy and heart into it and you just and you never uh you never mourned that that you just moved on and i started crying when she told me because i had never even thought that thought before mm -hmm. wow okay so unmourned losses is another theme and, and notice i say plural because this was one loss were there other losses absolutely what were they I would say that my life is fraught with loss. Um, like the loss of my childhood, having to grow up fast. The, mm -hmm. um, the loss of being able to do dance. I mean, I completely quit dance. Even after, when I didn't become professional, I stopped even doing classes. It wasn't even a part of my life. I like cold turkey quit dance. Wow. Other losses are more, uh, more concrete losses, like uh, the loss of my marriage. Like I had a divorce from a long-term marriage and um, we, there wasn't really a, incident or horrible thing that happened that broke us up we just sort of decided that we were growing apart we had to go our separate ways and i kind of did the same thing with that oh okay that's done so now i just move on just like pick yourself up and do the next thing um go ahead i also like i lost my dad five years ago that was sort of a unexpected he got sick and within a year he was gone from cancer so we didn't have a lot of time to prepare he had not been sick his whole adulthood or anything it just sort of cancer came out of nowhere and within a year he was gone i've tried hard to mourn that loss but i know that i carry that around with me still mm -hmm. i wanted to um, ask a question do you, you mind me jumping ahead. in um no go ahead well, I'm wondering, the loss of your marriage to me feels like it might be, it's, it might have its own theme embedded in it. Um, so I want to explore it a little bit. Yeah. Because that, that's the goal of the emotions column is explore all these different corners until you have it kind of rounded out to a base level of themes. And I always tell people, if it's less than six, you're not going to really capture a person so much. And mm -hmm. if it becomes more than 12, usually it means you need to combine some because some will become lesser than others, and we just want to get it distilled down to its essence. So I want to explore this, though. The loss of your marriage, that could mean many things to many people. It could mean like a loss of innocence. It could mean uh, a sense of jadedness about life. It could mean I am once again not accepted, but this is like a more like a rubber stamp on that of not being It was accepted. that. <laughs> Aha. Okay, now this is one of the reasons we explore things this way. I, I list things and usually people are like, yes, it's that one. <laughs> so I'm going to put this down maybe as a separate theme and there's a reason for that. But I'm going to say loss of marriage um, signaling uh, a confirmation of rejection as a permanent experience in life, something like yeah. that. Does that sound right? Sure. Mm -hmm. I will never be accepted. Um, and the reason I have it as a separate theme, even though we already have in here, you know, I don't feel I'm worth enough or, or not feeling good enough. Um, all of these things relate to it. But when, when a single relationship confirms your sense that you're not valid that that could come up again you know and it can come up even in little ways 
you might have like a friend who turned their back on you and then it feels like confirmation of that again. So it feels Absolutely. like confirmations feel like their own confirmation of a lack of worth is its mm -hmm. own theme. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah, totally. Okay. What else are we missing here? One area that I'm aware of is you had this, um, this side of you that you were getting all good grades, but you also were rebelling like on the side, you, you, you know, had gotten into drugs at various points and things like that. Does that fit as one of the themes or is that just kind of more an episode of your life? I would say the feeling of having to live a double life where yes. there's the portrayal of me to the public, the professional me, or in me, it was the me that got good grades, the me that I portrayed to my parents for teachers, having to like be fake, put on an act, pretend I'm someone I'm not. And then the other side of me is doing what I actually want. So um, the real me is never acceptable. I need to portray this better, polished, professional version of me. That's how it has translated into my adult life. Wow. Um, so well said. Um, I'm going to read it back to you. I just put the feeling of having to live a double life. And then I put this part. I had to hide major parts of myself. And then you said this. The real me is never acceptable. I need to portray the more polished, acceptable version of me. Does that capture it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it, it gets me a little emotional. Well, that one's hard. Yeah. And listen, whenever we hit on, whenever it makes you emotional, we know we've got it right. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's not right if you don't get emotional, but it the emotions usually are confirmation of that. We've got a great, great list going. I have some questions here. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, and by the way, I'm not counting these to be like, well, we have to cap it at twelve. <laughs> I'm very flexible. For some people, it is going to be more, and that's okay, as long as it is capturing an equally major part of your life. So that's what I want to get to now. Is there anything that we have not covered yet that, if we were trying to describe who is Katie? and this was left out, it would be a major hole. I don't think so. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. So, Okay, well, you're not stuck with this. This is a draft. The, the, the columns are always a rough draft. So you may come up with three more themes or a number more, or we need to combine something, or you realize mm -hmm. there was some major part that was left out. That's okay. What I wanted to do was to go through the exercise of it to show you what's in this column. Yeah. How does this column work and how do we start to build it out? Based on the notes you sent me, I'm not seeing anything that's missing here either. I'm going to go back quickly though and, and look at that. And yeah, see. that's it, what it, I was going to ask you if there was anything that I wrote to you where I would have missed something. Well, I do have one question, and that is about experts in the world who are supposed to help you. I think this fits in with there's no one there oh, to protect me. That is a bad one for me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, so Experts I, I, as doctors, experts as dance experts, experts in the art world, all these people I've put so much stock in. <laughs> so how should we phrase that? Experts in so many fields have profoundly let you down? Um, or I would say I trade you. Even? Um, I heavily trusted experts and now I feel highly suspicious of them. Okay. Or highly distrustful. Yep. I used to put a lot of stock in them and now, uh, and you know why that's upsetting is I don't know who to ask for how do I do things in my life. <laughs> right. If experts are wrong, who do you, like who do you go to? That's right. So I, I think I don't know who to trust is part of that. Yeah, sure. So this was interesting. I went back to your notes and I realized, okay, that part is not fully represented here. Then I realized it already fits into an existing theme, but I added to it. Mm -hmm. So that's part of how we build these themes out. Um, yeah. actually there's one other theme I want to build out a little bit more and then I'll go back to the notes. 
not feeling seen, invisible, people not paying attention. What happened with that? How do you think about that? That's something from childhood. I had a younger sister that was a lot uh, louder, more boisterous, um, that I think gained a lot more of my parents and family attention. And even from a really young age, I started doing attention seeking behaviors because I felt unseen. I felt ignored. Katie's quiet and Katie's independent and smart and good. And she can just take care of herself. Mm, wow. So it's like no one noticed I needed help. Of course. And I guess why would they notice if I'm being good and I'm being quiet and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, but they should have known to, to pay attention to me equally. Right. See, that's what I wanted to yeah. say back to you. Just to be, just to be empathic to that. Um, it is a parent's job to notice their kid, no matter what's happening. Yeah. To not assume they're fine just because they look fine. Right. You know, in our society, we're generally not educated enough about how parenting goes to know that. But the, I hope you don't mind my saying this is being in your corner and saying it. It's no excuse. I they completely agree. And we can say what a lot of people say. My parents were great parents. They did the best they could with what they had and what they had been taught in their upbringing. Right. And that's true. But from a personal perspective, it was very wounding. And I wish that they had instead said, Katie seems fine a little too often. <laughs> Are you <Me> okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that's okay. This is good information. We've got a lot of this built out. I'm just going to run back to the notes for a second and see if we're missing anything that I think is jumping out at me. Um, well, there was uh, some abuse in um, in some relationships. Yeah. Do we do we have that represented here? Uh, uh, abuse and traumatic events. Feels like there's maybe more to represent here. Um. Yeah, yeah. That you know, it's not uh, those necessarily things true. have happened to me. I I feel like I've done. I've come far with uh, recognizing those things and writing about them, talking about them. I used to just bottle those things up. And for many years, I did not talk about any of those incidents or relationships. I have but, an idea. Um, Let me share my idea and see what you think. Please. It sounds like you've done a very good job working those things through. But I want I wonder if the one thing that's lingering is that they also were a confirmation of your lack of worth. Yeah. I was gonna say that. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Uh so I'm gonna say the traumatic and abusive things that happened to me were yet another confirmation of my lack of worth. My And illness. beyond that, I would feel shame like gosh. Why, it's so ridiculous that I feel so unworthy letting these things happen to me. Who okay. would let these things happen to them? Obviously, you must really feel like crap about yourself. Right. So that does feel like a very distinct theme. I let these things happen to me because I didn't feel good and they were confirmation of that. I'm an irresponsible caretaker for myself. You know, the shame of the, of that. Yeah. Do you feel, though, how that was its own theme? Yeah. Okay, so I'm glad we got that. Let's jump back to the notes, see if we missed anything else. Because uh, it certainly can happen. It, it hides right in plain sight. Um, let's see. I'm... There's one other area that I want to explore that we have not really gotten to. Oh, two things. Um, maybe even three things. Okay, so we've got the fact that you have a son. I want to know what it's like for you as a parent. We're going to get to that in a second. 
Then there is also um, moving to Chicago and the um, re your relationship with your sister and how that played out is another mm -hmm. aspect of things. And then thirdly, there was the the career you had as a wedding photographer and feeling that the symptoms ultimately broke that apart and your uh, relationship. Uh, at least that's the way you represented it in what you wrote. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those three things. Let's go. Let's go through one by one. Let's talk about parenting first. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything major in the parenting area that you think either fits with previous themes that just to fold it in? Like, for instance, do you feel like an imposter as a parent? Um, I'm you know, you I feel or... like a pretty good parent. Good. I feel, I, I feel actually like parenting isn't something that needs to be on the list. Good. And that I do a pretty good job and that I have mm -hmm. a little bit of guilt here and there, but I think it's like a normal level. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put down parenting as a power column issue. What I mean by that is that it's not a theme that is upsetting to you that is likely to lead to an emotions column symptom, but it is actually something that feeds your power column. Absolutely. It's good. Yeah. All right, good. So we're just getting everything placed in the columns. Mm -hmm. Now let's move to um, the move to Chicago and the disappointment about that. I could see that potentially relating to there's no one to protect me or help me. Mm-hmm. It could just fit right into that, but is it is it its own thing? Was it something about betrayal or the shock of it, or what? what what's in that? Um, I'm trying to remember what I wrote to you, but it probably had to do with moving back from Chicago to my hometown here in Michigan and feeling like I had left a lot oh, behind move, in Chicago. Okay, it was a move from. I had left a Got it. yes, I had left a lot behind in Chicago um to sort of be a bigger part of my family at the time when I was having my son and that was completely unseen and unvalidated by my family uh, okay so uh, this goes into not feeling seen again um my my sacrifices including moving back home weren't recognized Is yes that right oh yeah okay good now so you can see how some of them get folded into a theme. Some of them get developed into a new theme. Some of them aren't upsetting to you, so they aren't themes, but maybe fit in the power column. Right. So last one was the the, the wedding career and, and the symptoms breaking that apart and the marriage. Does that fit yeah. in with things already? Does it feel, Maybe it fits with the, the loss of the marriage signaling a confirmation of rejection. Maybe it um, relates to, uh, I'm not saying this is true, Katie, but it could be that it signaled to you like, I, I can never have good things or I can never work hard enough to make something work or this is what happens when you don't follow your dreams and are doing these things. I didn't protect mm. myself. There's all kinds of things potentially in there. I'm not, Gosh, I'm not really sure where it fits in. I mean, what the wedding? Okay. So I graduated undergrad with a degree in photography and decided to do something marketable with it, which is start to shoot weddings. I didn't want to do that. I had no love for shooting weddings. I was just trying to do something, make a career that involved my degree. And I think I did that to try to uh, please my parents and maybe other people in the world to show them I'm using my art school degree for something that's marketable and I can take care of myself with this. And then I shot weddings. I absolutely hated it because it was so very, very stressful. And then after shooting the last wedding of the first wedding season, I just woke up one morning with crippling neck pain that had never been there before. This so is, I actually yeah. I attribute that my symptoms to something that have something related with that. Yeah. This is very, very important. I folded it into the imposter syndrome as an artist, and here's why. <laughs> um, I wrote down doing things I don't even love to do to please my parents and show them I'm using my degree. And then I put in parentheses, and this might be the most important part. I am not a waste of resources. You're trying to prove that to yourself, but you yeah. don't believe it. Sure, yep. 
just like you said at the beginning, I'm not, you know, you feel like you're a waste of resources. Right. Okay. Right. So we, we, we need to stop shortly, but I wanted to ask you, do you feel like we covered who you are in this? Oh, absolutely. Okay. If it occurs to you that we're missing something else, we'll add it. If we need to change things, we will. But this was a this was a case where it was incredibly productive. We actually got exactly twelve themes. Interestingly, um, mm-hmm. I do find that's usually the magic number um, when there's a lot going on. And we've developed them a lot too. Sometimes I only can develop like three in a, a session. Well, we basically we developed eleven out of twelve pretty well, and maybe even 12. So we're in really good shape with this. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to send you these notes and you've got the notes you took if, if you took any as well. Mm-hmm. And w- when we get to the action steps, I'm going to show you how does this work? But because what you're going to find is once doubt is removed and once you're not having chronic, supposedly chronic symptoms, I call everything consistently mm-hmm. acute because I don't like to think of it as chronic. Chronic means yeah. unbroken in time. But that can be true for more than one reason. And the reason I know it to be is consistently acute. It's just the same thought process always. Once I that's broken, that. good. Once that's broken and we get that removed, these themes are going to be incredibly useful to you in your daily life as you try to navigate wh- what symptoms are popping up when. But first, mm-hmm. got to get that shift. That's what we're going to do next time. Do you have any questions for me before we stop for today? I don't think so. Thank you for your help. This has been wonderful. Well, it's been my pleasure, Katie, and um, an honor to get to find out about you and know all of these things. And it is really my very sincere hope and, and my expectation even that even over the course of this consultation, you are going to have moved to a place where you can see that you didn't think you were worth it, but you'll actually think you are. Uh, it could feel like a tall order, but I know how these things work with the columns, and especially when we get to the power column, that's going to change things. So we've got some really good work up ahead. This was incredibly good work, very productive, and we will keep at it. I look forward to seeing you next time, and we will keep at it. That sounds great. Thanks, Dan. All right, Katie. See you soon. Bye-bye. That was a fascinating session, and as always, very moving. Um, to see Katie get a little more deeply in touch with just how she has not valued herself or more, more, more to the point has been taught not to value herself, but integrated that into her was so hard to see. And yet very uplifting for me because I know what's coming. I know that she's going to get better from that and, and learn to actually value herself. That'll be in the power column. But the other thing that was really interesting about this is how experienced she is in the TMS slash mind body field Because what it can show is, why are the columns different? Why can they sometimes break people out of things that um, the rest of the work in the mind-body world isn't yet getting done? And to me, it's all about the organization and understanding. But Katie did a beautiful job, because she knows so much about herself, recognizing these themes. And we were able to develop 12 major themes. But the key is this. Those themes represented her. There was nothing left out. So I felt this was a very complete emotions column session. It was great to have her on. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and we'll get back to you personally.